Hello YouTube, my name is Jeremy Advance, this is Dota 2, and this is an introduction to Sven. Sven is a strength hero with a fairly low intelligence gain, who until uh, a recent buff was played almost exclusively in a support role. He was able to carry, but wasn't particularly great at it. He wasn't, in my opinion, a very good support. I wasn't a fan of him as a support, sorry, I'm just checking the shared content. Now, um... Since then, Sven got a serious buff to, to the way Great Cleave works, and I think a way to God's Strength? I can't really remember. But anyway, this moves Sven into a more carry orientated role, and while you think, well, Cleave is a um, literally a, a cleave effect, it's not particularly gr great for single target right click damage. It doesn't in fact in any way increase the amount of damage Sven does in a 1v1 situation. So, <coughs> in that sense, Sven doesn't make a particularly great carry. What Sven is great at though, is if you look at his cleave damage, it's a 65%. When you combine this with something like God's Strength, and good damage dealing items like a Mask of Madness, what Sven can do, and what Sven is now known for doing, especially in um, the pro scene is where he came out, I think no Tidehunter started using him, pretty much one dream hack on the use of him. I'm not entirely sure why this pause comes up. Um, but doesn't really matter, it gives me a bit more time to talk about him. He was used for one shot killing just a, a huge amount of people, the basically the entire enemy team, and he is very, very strong for that now. Um, oh, it looks like Gaz was sorting out some stuff. Gaz is playing the Windrunner this game, I think he's going to be supporting me. Ollie is in fact playing as well, he's, uh, he's playing Chen Jungle. He got a bit of random gold, which was nice. And uh, our two random people are an offlane Pudge, which is terrible, 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 and the Solar Mid Tinker, which is pretty standard. They could have actually swapped that round. Tinker can do an offlane by um, stacking Ancients and using his, uh, what's his name to get extra XP, his uh, third skill, March of the Machines. But anyway, so here are Sven's skills. His uh, first skill, which is absolute bread and butter for Sven, it's what makes him such a great support, is a unmissable single target spell uh, Stormhammer. It's a two second duration stun at all levels as well as a nuke that goes from 100 to 325 damage. So that's a pretty good nuke. As well as that, like I said, it's unmissable. Once Stormhammer is targeted on you, there is no fucking escaping. Stormhammer always hits. Other than using something like a BKB uh, or phase shift say on Puck, it's it's gonna hit you. You can't blink away from it, you can't force staff away from it, you can't dodge it or anything like that. It's gonna hit, and it hits pretty hard. It's a 325 damage nuke at sort of level 3, it's doing 250 damage. That's a pretty hefty chunk for what is only 140 mana. Of course, you can see, I can only throw one of these at the moment. Um, sex is built, as I said, great cleave. It's a cleave effect, if you don't know. Cleave effects basically mean that your base damage uh, hits in an area. When you attack a target, your base damage hits in an area around you to the percentage of that number. It's not affected by armor values or anything. It hits for that number uh, by that percentage. So 65% of 60 damage I would do right now to everything in an area if that was maxed out and I was hitting. And then um, first thing I'm going to do is just try and do some lane control and just try and keep this uh, here. Sadly, I screw up a little bit um, by denying one of my own creeps a little bit too quickly and everybody on their team dived the fuck out of our Tinker and Ollie and the Tinker uh, actually managed to uh, fight against that. They sent two hit, two, three heroes there, they sent, yeah, the Lion, the Shadow Fiend, who's going to be their mid solo, and the Spirit Breaker, who should be their easy lane solo, and it looks like the Lion is now going to come the slain. He's also bringing an entire wave of creeps, which if I remember rightly is what pushes this lane out, which is very, very irritating because I didn't want this lane pushed out. Uh, I wanted to try and keep some sort of level of control of it, which would give um, which would give Gaz a chance to pull and stuff, which would be nice. Now, third skill I'm going to pick up is War Cry. It's uh, an aura ability. Voss very, very little mana. Increases the movement speed of everybody in the area by 12% uh, and also scales up from 4 to plus 16 armor. And that is a huge, huge deal in a team fight. 
people forget about how just good, just how good Warcry is. Now there are diminishing returns on this, but essentially it goes up by four armor per level. Four armor is equivalent to around six percent HP. Now obviously, like I said, it's diminishing returns. Like the first one is like more like seven percent, but sort of average mid-level armors, it's it's around six percent. So it's a pretty big deal now. Mostly I'm waiting till Gaz gets here so that I can get a bit more last hits. Now, the reason that I wanted to get this game up, it's not a particularly great game as Fen, and that's not the idea of this series. This series is not to show me kicking the shit out of people with heroes that I'm good at or anything like that. There are plenty of heroes that I'm good at, and I have plenty of games, just like everybody else, where I kick the shit out of everybody on the enemy team over and over again. That does eventually happen this game. Spoilers, but... That's not the idea of this series, and this is to show off um, just how much of a difference, uh, how sort of how this hero works mechanically, That's and how much of a difference different items make on him. Now, like I said before, I kind of touched on this, the general consensus is to make Sven work properly, you have to get a Max of Madness, and you have to get probably a BKB. Generally then, almost everybody, almost everybody, gets a Daedalus or a Crit, as it's called sometimes. This is though that you can, basically on a sort of luck chance, but attacking very very fast and unable for anyone to stop you, you can one hit kill the entire enemy team with a cleave or something. Because you do so much damage with God's strength that you don't need another sort of strength uh, damage item or anything. And generally that's the way to go about things. And that's pretty much how I'm going to go about things this game. My eventual idea is to go for those items. Generally, in a game where they don't have very much control, I would skip getting a BKB. But in this game, look through their team, and um, we'll see how many things can be stopped by BKB, and how many things I have to worry about. So, Battery Assault, that's one set of stuns that will slow me down. Burrow Strike, that's something that will really slow me down. Um, Shadow Razors, these can do a huge amount of damage to me. Lion can stun me two things and do a huge amount of damage to me. And Spirit Breaker has two stuns, both of which can be stopped by BKB. That is an enormous amount of control to put on a carry that I don't want it. And I, that was a terrible last hit then. I should have just left that one. I knew when it was coming. I was like, oh, I'll wait until the thing to hit it, to hit the, uh, the right click hits it and then I'll do it. And uh, you can see just how hard things are at the moment. Things are very, very annoying. Luckily, uh, Gaz gets a really nice stun there, and we're going to get pick up a kill. And I th think he's going to try and make it out here, but we're going to pick up a second kill as well. I'm trying to leave this one, and I was trying to leave this one as much as possible. I thought Ollie had this, but uh, it turns out he didn't. And this guy managed to get away when I should have just thrown Stormbolt uh, or Stormhammer. Why do I call it Stormbolt? Maybe it used to be called Stormbolt. I've always called it Stormbolt. And uh, again, just going back immediately to last hitting creeps and such. I really should have got that kill, by the way. That was a pretty serious mistake from me. So, starting item build, basic regen, a little bit extra strength, and some uh, basic attributes. All those things are pretty important on Sven. I should maybe have gotten a slightly different build. Uh, I don't particularly know, to be honest. I thought it was going to be a solo long lane clockwork, It's they ended up sending a Sand King here as well with him, which means I'm a little bit more scared in this lane, which means I probably should have got something like a Stout Shield or maybe a little bit more regen. Not entirely sure, lots of options are available there, but my starting item build certainly isn't a problem in this game, it works fine. And uh, you can see just how Warcry pretty much saved my life there, absolutely necessary to get out, and uh, I'm going to... Uh, salve myself up here. I think Gaz is going to give me his tangos. I'm going to eat through these. But we're going to need a gank from an, from either Ollie on the Chen, um, which is something... By the way, for those of you who don't know, if you're playing a jungler, you're a support. I don't care what type of sort of jungler you're playing. If you're playing Lifestealer, you're a support. Your job is to support other lanes using the farm from the jungle. It's to, it's to make everything else more efficient and such. Your job is not to sit and farm in the jungle for 10 minutes, and I should have denied that tower again. There are mistakes in this game. This is not me playing to my absolute best at all. This is me playing very, very averagely, and playing with Gaz as well, who's very uh, 
still a very new player. He's done well in a couple of the games that you've probably seen. Um, I think my last one, yeah, my Nagasaran support one, he was playing the carry in that game. He did pretty well that game, so he made a few mistakes. We all make a few mistakes. Um, and this is going to be a game where I make a ton of mistakes and some teammates make some mistakes as well that screw me over during the mid game that aren't particularly obvious or anything. But um, if you'll notice, everybody is frigging ganking me. They are focusing hard on dealing with me. They are sending multiple people. And this was a really good job by me because that absolutely saved my life. There was no, no way I was surviving. If Gaz didn't uh, get a good um, shackle shot then, and I didn't get a two-man Stormbolt. So, one thing that I didn't talk about with Stormbolt is, though it's a targeted spell, it's an AoE. So, when it hits a guy, it does a stun in the AoE around him, and that was... They, because they were close together, I was able to stun the Clockwork and the Sand King at the same time, and that's really, really important to do. It makes a huge difference, and our Pudge here... He's getting into a fight with these guys. I don't know how particularly how things are going to go, but... Wow, great Centaur Stomp by Ollie there. That was really cool. <laughs> I really like it when play Ollie plays these, like, Chen and stuff. Because he's actually really, really good at junglers and such. But you can see that we are going to make uh, do the worst from this fight. We do probably have, in my opinion, slightly worse early game. And the having an offlane Pudge is a serious, serious... Uh, it's It's really bad. But if you'll notice, they are not farming very efficiently. In fact, they're farming highly inefficiently. They're really, really farming badly. You can see they're, they're sort of all over the map and such, and that guy's choke point jungling really well. Um, <laughs> and I don't think he is, no, he's not now. But they're, very, they're not farming efficiently. You'll see, levels-wise, I am still doing pretty well on the levels. And you see, overall, our team is actually doing better on the levels because we're splitting up. Now, obviously splitting up and farming isn't always sensible, but... These guys should have given me that kill there. Uh, little early things like that are really important. Now, I'm going to pick up a Bracer at this point because I am feeling just a little bit too squishy for this point in the game. I don't want to be squishy at all. I want to be the total opposite of that. I want to be strong as hell. Uh, and again, these little obvious easy definite kills like that should probably be left to your carry. Now, in the early game there is an argument for not leaving them for the carry and leaving them for uh, solo mids, but in a situation like that the solo mid wasn't there, so generally we should leave little kills like that for your carry. It's really really uh, useful little thing to do. It's not a huge thing, it's not especially important, but you can see just how scared I am now. Even though there's nobody around this lane anymore, I'm just very, very worried all the time about being ganked, and I'm going to be feeling like that the whole game. I make a little bit of a mistake here because I was tanking creeps and I didn't notice. I think I was looking at something else on the map or something, clicking on somebody else's items, and just uh, just taking a little bit too much damage. I'm now at a point where I'm kind of scared about being up here, but uh, we would have maybe been able to pull the wave, but I think Gaz, yeah, Gaz ran off, uh, forgot about the timing for it so we missed that pull which is a little bit annoying but these guys are actually uh, right clicking the wave they're auto attacking so they are going to push this wave back up to us it's going to give me a little bit of a chance to get some right click to get some uh, to farm but you can see again people are roaming and moving onto my lane all the time even if they're not doing particularly much I'm not able to get last hits and I'm not able to get farm efficiently here it's just it's just not possible so I'm going to pull this stack into the creep wave. You can do this, uh, you don't have to do this on the 15 second mark immediately after you stack. You can actually do it off after the um, 45 second dish mark as well. And it looks to me like Gaz is pretty dead there. I was thinking about throwing a stun or something, but I saw that the, uh, he had illusions coming as well. As well as that, the Shadow Fiend is pretty strong right now. He's got 20 odd souls. He's uh, He's got a lot, basically. And it looks like... I'm going to die here, but Ollie, absolute pro move here, sends me back to base after healing everybody. Get a few, get a triple stun there, I think, and a few right clicks. This is going to set up more kills for our team. Sadly, we're only going to get one or two because the Tinker came in. I thought we were only going to get one from that, but uh, eventually we do come off better from that fight. But you can see just how much roaming and moving about the map there has already been. 
most of their heroes aren't even level 6 yet. That's, that's a really good shackle. Is that guy going to die? He should die. I feel like he should die. He's not dying. Guys, kill him. Please. Okay, yeah. That, that guy was just... The Tinker was just buttering up until he could get some rockets off. So, I'm just trying to move around the map, get myself some safe farm and some safe solo levels if I can. That's the ideal thing that I want. I just want to sit and farm for a while because while Sven used to be a support and he is still good in the early portion of the game, we need me to carry this game. We don't really have anybody else on the team who can carry. Tinker, obviously, is a hero that is able to get an enormous amount of farm and can sort of carry a game. But, he doesn't do very much physical damage, and they have a Shadow Fiend and a Spirit Breaker, which makes me feel like they very much can carry this game, and they can win on teamfight as well. They have heroes like Lion, which are very controlling. They have an excellent initiators in the form of uh, Spirit Breaker to a certain extent. He's not excellent, but he's, he does it pretty well. Uh, Clockwork is an amazing initiator, really, really strong. You can see he initiates on me there, and this is going to be the death of me and the uh, the Pudge. You can see just how much they're roaming on us. This is a huge, huge deal, and this is going to be why I'm absolutely going to need a BKB this game. A BKB is just, it's, it's a huge difference. Now, the way Sven works is you get a... Well, the way he's being played, generally, as a carry, is because you get a Mask of Madness and you get a BKB. So you're, you are more susceptible to right clicks with that build, but you attack faster, you life steal, and nobody can stop you from attacking unless they have something like a, a passive bash, which Spirit Breaker has. So I'm going to have to kill him fucking fast in the fights later. But because of the way those passives work, you can essentially continue to fight as long as you are fighting. If I do high enough damage and right click somebody with a Mask of Madness on, the extra damage that I am taking will not be a problem because I simply do so much damage that I lifesteal everything back that I need to worry about, as well as doing so much damage to the whole team in general. Now, skill build that I generally go for on Sven, I've maxed out Stormbolt, I got Warcry. Now, when I couldn't level up Warcry, when, when basically my only option was to level up Cleave, I got a level of stats, because early, Cleave is minimal. It's very, very useless. Say I'm doing 80 damage. Uh, well, okay, say so I'm doing 94 damage, which is how much I'm doing. 20% of 94 damage is nothing in a fight. It's equivalent to to a creep. The it, Yeah, sure, I'm doing a creep's worth of damage to everybody on their team. But it's just simply not worth it. It's less than 20 damage, even. It's not even that much. I'm trying to run in, and I'm trying to get here in time for this fight, but everyone's just dying in the time that I got, that I get here. I was a little bit slow, maybe should have popped Warcry first, but I was thinking, well, if I can get to them in time, I can pop Warcry and then I'll keep them alive. But I'm just not able to. Now, other item that I'm going to go for as well here is I'm going to go for a drum. Again, this is a whole part of this um, mentality that as long as you are fighting, you are winning the fight. Because you're... Because a drum gives me uh, extra attack speed and extra movement speed, it means that people won't be able to kite me quite as easily. Erect Lobster. <laughs> That's kind of funny. He picks Sand King and his name is Erect Lobster, which I guess you could say is what a, a, like a Sand King is. I don't know. That sounds really racist now that I put it like that. But it's not meant to be. I mean, in the term that he's like Erect Lobster is like a, a scorpion. No, like Desert Lobster. I, yeah, it sounds racist, doesn't it? It doesn't matter. Either way, now this is one thing that annoyed me and this started happening around this point in the game. The Tinker should be pushing waves out that are further away and I should be getting the safer farm. That was safer farm here. This area here is much less safe. He should have teleported to that area and let and farmed it, pushed it out, pressured the enemy team, pressured the enemy towers and put some pressure on the enemy team and uh, just generally got on farm like that rather than trying to get farm uh, like this but I think we're going to get a good team fight here we should we feel like we're in a position to it feels like we're in a position to get a good team fight but we're going to get 
uh, it hit pretty hard here. We do run in, we do get a good team fight, and we prove at this point that we uh, are able to still dish out the damage. Because until this point, we've been mostly losing. You can see on the scoreboard, we've not been doing particularly well. We felt like we've been losing, we felt like we've lost map control, we've not got it the game under control but we're gonna get the uh, Roshan now and this is uh, pretty important I think we're gonna get it Roshan yeah we're gonna get the Roshan before anyone on their team is up there finish my drum at this point you can see I'm not going for magic wand or anything like that I'm purely focusing this game on the late game even my kills less than assists at this point do not matter and won't matter I'm gonna pick up this Aegis and it's just giving me a little extra security almost. I'm not going to use this particularly to push or anything like that. I'm going to use it to farm as safe as possible. Sadly Gaz is in a terrible position in this game as the, the support. When you're playing a support with a carry who just wants to farm all game it can be really, really tiresome. It feels really tiresome because you, your, your job is a sacrifice. But it's absolutely worth playing it can be pretty good fun if you know what you're doing. Again, I'm maxing out Warcry before I get my cleave. I only get the cleave late game. I don't think the cleave is good enough and Sven is mobile enough to make use of cleave as a farming tool. Maybe as a pushing tool, it's pretty good. But as a farming tool, say using it in the jungle or using it on creep waves, it's not going to help you very well. Just trying to get... All these last hits here, being very, very careful about it. I have picked up my Morbid Mask now. I should maybe have picked up my Morbid Mask earlier. This is something I do know a lot of people do. I'm not... I'll admit this now and I'll say this now. I do not play carries very often. We have way too many wards on the map. I think I remember Ollie saying this. I think he bought wards and then the Pudge started buying wards as well. And nobody communicated on things that they were doing. It's like, um, I think both Ollie and uh, Gaz end up going for mech. Ollie will obviously always go for mech because he's playing a Chen, it's just one of the things that Chen does. Gaz doesn't probably realise that, he's probably very rarely played with a Chen. If he ever solo queues, he'll play at a lower skill bracket than me and Ollie generally will do. Um, but if he's not solo queuing, he's going to be... Um, he's still very rarely people play Chen at a, even, a, even a sort of mid to higher tier skill level. Because he's just a very, very difficult hero to play. It does require some pretty good micro. I mean, I know Ollie says that he doesn't think it does, but that's because he's good at the hero and he has good micro. Have picked up a TP scroll at this point as well. I am not going to use this aggressively. I'm going to use it to counter gank. That's the only time that I'm going to use this. And that's exactly what I'm going to do at this point. Because we have the Aegis and the Immortal, I should be counter ganking. We should be going into this fight. Unluckily for us, however, they managed to get a Shadow Fiend and a Sand King ulti, and this is just going to completely decimate us. I'm just going to run away at this point. There's absolutely no chance of me killing anybody else on their team. And it looks like the Shadow Fiend's got a Blink Dagger. I'm not personally a fan of Blink on Shadow Fiend. I don't think it's that necessary to get the uh, the ulti off. Shadow Fiend's just trying to do a little bit of damage here on me because he is str he is much much stronger than me in the early portion of the game. But if I get to a point where I have sort of BKB, Mask of Madness, and a crit, I will absolutely destroy this team. They do not have anybody who is tanky enough to stand up to me for any length of time. Not even Spirit Breaker and Clockwork are that tanky. Sven does an enormous, enormous amount of damage in the late portion of the game. Even the mid tier of the game, if you manage to get those sorts of items up, God's Strength doubles your basic damage. Combining that with a crit stick and the massive cleave that he does, he just does a huge amount of damage to everybody in the team. He's really, really good as a team fight mid game carry. Even as a late game carry team fighting, he's extremely, extremely good at it. On the same level, sort of level that Gyrocopter is at. And again, you can see how they are really not trying to farm efficiently this game. For good reason. They don't feel like they need to farm efficiently. They can absolutely rely purely on just being as aggressive as possible to us. Because our early portion team fight is just so much worse than this. The only thing that we really have in our favour is that we have a Chen who is able to heal us all. We do still have good... Um, 
good team fight. I, I wouldn't say that we have terrible team fight or anything, or that we just simply can't team fight. But they have absolutely staggering team fight. Sand King is a brilliant team fight hero. Clockwork a brilliant team fight hero. Lion's a pretty damn good team fight hero. Shadow Fiend, Spirit Breaker not so much, but he's still very much able to deal with any one of our heroes at this point in the game. I'd say he's um, very good in his solo versus solo situation. Which is what he's going to be trying to do, and again, I'm just trying to get these last hits here. This makes a huge difference for me. I am going to finish off my magic one, just because I feel like I really need the early game potential. And I am kind of a ways off getting my uh, my Mask of Madness here. And it does slow me down, I, I won't, you know, deny that. But I just felt like I need the... Again, this is, this is where the Tinker was kind of annoying me this game, because he should be watching for where the carry, i.e. me the, on the Sven, is going. I mean, he is, sure, he's doing well and he's got, you know, he's got his build up, he's doing an enormous amount of da uh, damage in team fights and such, he's getting, uh, he's getting items up, but he really should realise that he can't solo carry this game up, and look, I mean, he's coming, he went to a lane that I was going to, and now he's gone to another lane that I'm going to, and everyone's getting sanking dolted there, which is really, really bad. And I, uh, I do come in for that fight there, and I lose my Aegis the Immortal. I am about to get screwed by that Shadow Fiend, but luckily for me, he screws up his thing. I have to stun that guy because he, uh, he would have controlled me in the fight otherwise. They keep on chasing me, but I am going to manage to make it out of this fight. And that was really, really important. You can see how useful the Aegis the Immortal was for me there. I managed to run in, get a kill, and get the hell out of there. There is absolutely no reason for me to want to stay in a fight for that long because at the moment I simply don't do enough damage for my lifesteal to make up the damage that will be done to me. Once I get a Mask of Madness and a BKB, it'll be much, much more straightforward for me. I won't have to worry so much about being controlled in the team fights. But at this point, it's still a pretty big deal for me. And uh, it looks like, oh no, sadly, they're not going to get him. That Pudge's hook was just not quite in the right place. That Shadow Fiend is playing very aggressively. But you can see just how far behind I am in this game. I'm only managed to get level 12. Their carry Spirit Breaker is level 11, but he's been mostly roaming, and he's created a lot more kills and space than me than I have. And the Shadow Fiend is level 15. He's 9 and 3 with 4 assists at this point, whereas I'm only 2, 1, and 7. It's really, really not good. I have only got the one death to my name, though. And that's pretty important. Soon, however, I think people are going to start getting a couple more kills on me. Just because it's get I'm getting closer and closer to the point where I can really, really kind of control the fights. As well as this, I think I... Yeah, I pick up my Mask of Madness right now. Now, the reason why this is going to cause me to die in a little bit more in the immediate early game is because a Mask of Madness... When you activate a Mask of Madness, it will increase your attack speed and your movement speed by a great amount. It's a 30% increase. Uh, actually no, it, no, it's a hundred percent. It's a hundred extra attack speed, thirty percent extra movement speed. But you take an extra thirty percent damage, which is why combining mask of madness with either extremely safe positioning, so being very far out of the fights, um, which I can't do because I'm a Sven, I'm a melee hero, I'm a very very manly hero. I'm a hero that has to charge straight in to the middle of the enemy team and beat the hell out of them. That's just the way that Sven works. But a a BKB means that their stuns and stuff mean little or nothing to me. They they just do nothing. They simply can't stun me. Uh, it does mean that I can life steal though. Pretty good in the jungle. I'm keeping my health well. Sorry, I need to continue. I keep on losing my train of thought when I keep on talking something else. But if I'm continuing to attack at this very very high speed as well as making sure that I, because I'm much faster I can attack I can always guarantee that I can attack a lot of people this very very much able to just absolutely keep my health high from the lifesteal and uh, I'm gonna get a little bit of a tower there because I could see that there was a team fight top and I'm just trying to tower trade right now that's all I'm trying to do I come in for this fight I'm gonna throw a stun out on somebody But, by this point, almost everybody in the area is dead. I just need to get out of here. There's absolutely no point in me staying here, and I am picking up my Ogre Club. 
I want to play as safe as possible. Yes, I could have absolutely gotten a kill on the Spirit Breaker then. I could maybe have changed the target from the Spirit Breaker to the Shadow Fiend and killed the Shadow Fiend. But doing so would have absolutely guaranteed my death, and that's not how you want to play a carry. You want to try and stay safe all the time until the point where you're able to disregard pretty much the enemy team. Having something like a BKB means you can disregard all their stunts. Having uh, something like a heart uh, or a Scardy, enormous amounts of tank items and stuff means you can pretty much disregard their right clicks and stuff. Having uh, extreme maneuverability, like say Faceless Void's jump, means you can uh, disregard the their ability to control you and then burst you down because if you're able to get any sort of time outside of the stuns you can immediately get away it's like the same as a weaver the reason they're annoying isn't because they do the reason they're strong isn't because they do huge amounts of damage it isn't because they are able to deal with everybody on your team extremely fast it's because they're able to disregard certain aspects of your team your burst damage means nothing if you can't completely finish off a weaver their health means nothing their um health means nothing if I can single shot the entire enemy team, their nukes mean nothing if I can BKB and just run through the middle of them. That's how a, a carry works, you, you're able to get a huge amount of farm, disregard a lot of what the enemy team yeah, generally does as a, a, a normal thing, and then turn that into your huge amount of damage. That's why you go for these big damage items, is because you're able as a carry to do certain other things that other heroes like support simply can't do with the same level of fun. That's why carries are so strong in the late game. It's not because they do the huge amount of damage, it's because their huge amount of damage combined with their other skills allows them to do things. My huge amount of damage combined with Great Cleave is what allows me to do things. I don't do a particularly huge amount of damage, I do a really good amount of damage. But Great Cleave combined with that will mean that I'll do a huge amount of damage because I'll be hitting the entire enemy team. Using things like BKB and Mask of Madness it increases that BKB, allows me to just ignore everything on their team. It's very, very strong. And at this point is where we start feeling like we can be aggressive, but we, I don't know, we're kind of going uphill. The Pudge is invis, he's going for pickoffs, that's cool, Pudge go for pickoffs, but it, that was really poorly done by Pudge. He could have killed that guy a lot, lot faster. However, they are all controlled in the same place, and I think we are going to go for this kill. I'm going to come in slightly later. Yeah, so this team fight went bad because we were unable to control everybody on their team. You can see how just how many of them there were. They were controlled initially by the... Uh, Gaz is trying his absolute best to get away. I'm not sure whether he'll get away or not, though. Wow, that guy has an extremely similar build to our, that I do. So, that was just us being overconfident. We should never have taken those fights. Uh, it was simply a bad idea for us to do so. The reason it was a bad idea for us to do so is it was just so far up. The Pudge died before the rest of us were there. Yes, he did some pretty good damage, but we were no longer able to use him for damage in the rest of the team fight. They had five, we had four. They have a lot of stuns and a lot of team fight control. We still have to wait for me to be properly, properly uh, strong in this game. And I am going to get extremely strong, no doubt. If I continue farming at the rate that I've been farming, I will get pretty, pretty huge. I don't have a very great amount of farm in this game. Again, like I said, this is not me playing to my absolute best. This is not me playing the ideal situation with two people supporting me. This isn't me farming perfectly in the same spot in this lane around here for 40 minutes, coming out and killing everybody on their team. This is simply showing you how Sven works mechanically. Getting the farm and getting to that point isn't as important for you guys to see. And I'm sure I could get a Sven game where I do absolutely perfect the entire time. But what would be the point in me showing you that if you didn't uh, get from this uh, an understanding of just how the hero is able to work? So you can see, at this point in the game, with some pretty poor items, whether I simply can't 
do anything. Their team is just better in teamfight, and we shouldn't be teamfighting, we should be avoiding that. Yeah, we should maybe have made some pushes early with the Chen, but that's that's pretty much it. Otherwise, our entire focus should be on getting me farm, and until this point it hasn't really entirely been that. And then the Sand King's going to jump in, I pretty much said this was a bad idea, this fight. But we do get Hand of God, I stun the Sand King, I'm going to try and take this uh, this kill. But again, I'm being controlled in these team fights because we don't have, I don't have a BKB. You can see how much of a difference it's making for me. I get controlled and I get killed in this team fight. It's a really, really big issue. And until I have a BKB, there isn't any point in me team fighting. Ollie's just trying to piss about with them. <laughs> He's just playing silly buggers. Oh my god, they actually can't find him. No way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I never saw that in game and I don't think anyone mentioned it either, but that's bloody brilliant. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> that, uh, that guy's being charged at. I don't know, I think that maybe the Spirit Breaker should have got that. Maybe, I don't know, that would have been pretty ballsy. That Tinker does have it a lot of farm at this point, but he could have ulted in. Actually no, he couldn't have, his ulti was on cooldown. So yeah, okay, probably wouldn't have been a good idea. But he is able to jungle and such. So, again, this isn't a perfect game. This isn't about getting a perfect game. This isn't about great gameplay. What this is about is showing you mechanical differences and how this hero works compared to uh, a sort of just any standard hero. Just, just what makes Sven Sven, you know? And what makes Sven Sven is getting to what is actually only a mid-game level of farm. You can see at this game, I do not have enough farm. Well, what I don't have is enough farm. It's, what I lack is uh, safe farm. 91 creeps isn't bad for this point in the game, but it's not excellent by any stretch of the imagination. That was a pretty good hook there. It's really, really good that he uh, hooked him and kept him controlled there. I'm just gonna try and body block this guy until the point where I can throw a stun but he is duking pretty far. I'm just going to take this kill. At this point, I was getting fed up with the fact that he wasn't dead. Pick up a delusion rune here. Um, and again, it's important for me to take those kills like that. So you can see, from a point where I was 1, 1, and 7, doing pretty well, I'm now 4, 3, and 8. So that's what the difference of a Mask of Madness makes. So I probably should have just played safer, got somebody to de-ward maybe, uh, played safer, farmed the lanes, farmed the jungles, but at this point the Tinker has actually been a real detriment by pushing out lanes that uh, I really really needed and I'm gonna absolutely try and get this fucking kill here. I really wanted that guy but I thought I was uh, definitely overextending my welcome there. That Shadow Fiend is in a bad position. He does not want to be there. Let's see how he gets out. I do not I, I, I never saw this guy in the game, so... Well, I mean, I, I did see this guy in the game, but I never saw that he was here. It looks like he's just gonna blink out and then run away. Oh no, the rest of our team is getting initiated on from behind. Yeah, he runs up behind onto me. I'm at the point now where I'm doing a pretty huge amount of damage, and I just, uh, just run and beat the crap out of him. So, everybody else dies, well, the Pudge dies, and we start retreating back from that point onwards. Uh, they got their kill, but they've lost their carry. They've lost their main source of damage. We have lost the level of team cut control, though, that we want to be able to keep. So, again, getting really, really close to my BKB now. And you're going to see, after I get this BKB, you're going to see the difference that a, a Black King Bar makes on a hero like Sven. Any hero that requires to be able to attack constantly in a fight, and this is almost exclusively true for carries. Carries are the biggest group of uh, heroes that do this. It's not true uh, that it's just like, it's not exclusively carries. And again, this guy should not be stealing my farm. I ended up using my Mask of Madness just because I was pissed off at this point. He kept on moving to lanes where I really, really wanted the farm. And he, he should be pushing this top lane, he should be pushing the bot lane. But what he's been doing is pushing out the mid lane, which is the, the easiest place for me to probably get farm at this stage of the game. 
Now I am going to run in, I am going to try and get here in time for this fight. It does not look good for any of us though. Ollie is getting controlled pretty badly. The Pudge has been killed off. We have got one of them dead though. I'm going to see if I can get some kills. Um, I'm looking, seeing if there's an opportunity for me to run in and do some real damage at this point. Now that we're uh, lower on numbers, I've used my Mask of Madness, uh, trying to catch up to them. I've used my War Cry. I'm trying to find this guy, stun him, use my ulti. I'm just going to cleave through him as fast as possible. Absolutely destroy him in a short space of time. And in with that, I've managed to finish off my Black King bot. Now, for those of you who don't know, I know uh, lower skill levels, Black King Bars and such are not very common. Basically, Black King Bar gives you 10 strength, 24 damage. So for a strength hero, that's 34 damage. It's a pretty good damage item. Um, it costs 4,100 or 3,900. One of those. It doesn't really matter. But what it does is it gives you a duration of time ranging from 10 to 5 seconds. It starts off at 10. Every time you use it, it lowers. Uh, 10 seconds of complete magic immunity. Now when I say complete magic immunity, that isn't entirely true. Some skills, uh, particularly ultimates, do go through BKB. Things like uh, Naga Siren's Net also go through BKB. But mostly when ultimate's concerned, it's not the actual ulti that goes through BKB, it is the effects of it. So say Gyrocopter's cooldown um, the, does not damage you at all, but the slow that that gives does slow people in BKB, so that is one thing that that is pretty much all that can be used against BKB users is things like Gyrocopter's ulti, um, Batrider's ulti is very very good for it, that control people in a team fight. It's very very, they're very 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 strong at that. And you can see now that I've got my BKB I'm feeling a lot more confident about myself. Now, the reason for this is simply because and you're going to see it very soon, and I really wanted this regen rune. I was like, screw you, Pudge. I'm having this regen rune. You said that Pudge offlane was good. It's really not. You're 10, 12, and 9. Kind of feedy. Just initiating a lot on fights that we don't want to have. And you can see my levels at this point. We're starting to get to the point where levels of stats and just high level in general is going to make more and more of a difference for me. Uh, Sven does have fairly poor... Uh, Agi gain, fairly poor, Inter gain, not amazing, but pretty damn good uh, strength gain. And I was going to initiate up on that guy, I decided against it, they come in to try and fight us, as soon as this fight go happens, I'm going to stun them, put my Mask of Madness on, and just start cleaving through these with God strength, and you can see just how quickly I started killing them then. I ended up actually giving the double kill to the Pudge, which kind of annoyed me, I was like, well, <sighs> like... You've not played particularly great, Pudge. You really said this was going to work on the offlane. It's not. It's a terrible offlane hero. Uh, something like uh, a proper, just any proper offlane hero would have been better for us overall this game because it would have just, it would have provided us with a proper initiator, someone who didn't need so much farm. Well, I mean, Pudge doesn't need that much farm, but he needs a lot of levels. Uh, somebody that could have created space a little easier. Because they're five manning all the time, Pudge is not a good hero. Pudge is only good when people are split off, which is why uh, he's only really good in the early portion of the game. He's not particularly great in the... Well, I mean, I say he's not very good. What I actually mean is he's not very good uh, unless you're very good at him. Very, very good at him. Uh, versus, like, versus solo heroes. If you're very, very good, then you're going to, like always find the solo opportunities but in a situation like this it's just very very hard for him to find the solo opportunities I'm trying to get myself to a position where I can fight these guys and that guy just threw an ulti for no reason on me there was absolutely no case in which that guy was going to kill me he threw the ulti it was just a bad decision all around they should be leaving this kill for me but again People taking kills now at Ollie. I'm blaming you, Ollie. Now, picked up a Hyperstone at this point. I'm going to pick up an Assault Cuirass. That's because I want to play as safe as possible. I'm not going to go straight into crit. Assault Cuirass will still have, to an extent, the same effect because it will lower people's armor, which will make them much, much more susceptible to damage. Um, it doesn't work exactly like that as far as uh, cleave effects are concerned. I can't be bothered going in to talk about cleave effects, but basically, lower armor good. And again, picking up another tower at this point, really useful. My drum has kind of outlived its usefulness. I kind of regret getting a drum this game. 
I think I should have just gone straight from Mask of Madness into BKB. Um, that would have sped up my farm a lot. I would have got Mask of Madness much faster. I would have been able to, I was to jungle earlier. It would have just generally helped a lot. And we're trying to get me an Aegis at this point. I've dropped my TP scroll on the floor. We're trying to get this Aegis as quickly as possible. You can see I've stunned him. I think Ollie used Penitence on him. No, it doesn't look like he did then. Uh, or maybe he used it and it broke the Lincolns and then I stunned him. I don't know. We're trying to get this, uh, this Roche as quickly as possible. One thing that we've done is the Pudge is keeping up there. Basically, that as a ward. What we should have actually done is placed a ward, but we didn't have any wards on us at the time. So, I've got this Aegis of the Immortal. Second Aegis of the game. We are going to use this now in an aggressive function because I'm at the point where I just feel a lot more able to be aggressive. Because I have my BKB, it just makes a huge difference on Sven. On some hit, on some carries, it's not as important. On Sven, it absolutely is as important. It's, in my opinion, the item that changes this hero from a hero that requires a lot to do to a hero that that basically just turns into a complete monster in a team fight because for 10 seconds down to 5 seconds later on as your charge uh, reduces on it you simply are able to damage the entire enemy team with cleave uh, even if your damage isn't that great even if you have no damage items with god strength you're trebling your damage bonus damage of 200% you're trebling your damage you simply just do so much with that in the early portion of the game even then in a later portion of the game with just a BKB you can do that. It's why support when Sven was still pretty good because you simply didn't need anything. When you do get a, a, a fair amount, when you do have Mask of Madness, Assault Curass, Crit, um, I don't know, I'm trying to think of other things that are good on Sven. Monkey King Bar I guess, Basher, they're not as great for it. But when you do have that level of high farm and again this Tinker, like I am just about to finish my Assault Kuras Tinker. Fuck off. Luckily I'm gonna get the farm to get it, but I was just, Tinker just annoyed me a little bit this game. He'd been extremely greedy, he hadn't actually been that useful. He has a fair amount of kills, yeah, definitely has a good amount of kills, but he didn't create space in the way that a, a Tinker is supposed to. He just sort of pushed out and stayed very, very defensive. Tinker should push lanes out, um, and they still too have two side towers up at this point in the game, and it's 45 minutes into the game. Sorry, this has been such a long video. Don't worry, things are about to go godlike. Have my Assault Curass now. Those of you who don't know, Assault Curass increases your attack speed by 35, and gives you plus 10 armor, as well as two auras. Well, two friendly auras, which give you plus 20 attack speed to everyone on your team in, a, in, in the aura around you, as well as plus 5 armor, so you're getting a total of plus 15 armor, plus 55 attack speed, and reducing the armor of the enemy team by 5. Now they're pushing really, really aggressively here, and at this point, I was really scared that this game was going to end, uh, but these guys close up here, I turn on my BKB, run in, cleaving everybody as everyone's controlled, they're in a tightly packed area, I'm going to start just cleaving my way, do just huge damage at this point, I attack really really fast, we're going to chase down this last person, use Warcry to keep ourselves on him, we're just going to keep running after them, there is no getting away for Clockwork, Clockwork is absolutely freaking dead to us, really really want to finish this kill, but the Tinker just takes it, fuck you Tinker, screw you Doverkin, and from that, I just gained like three or four levels or something. I'm becoming huge at this point. I decide, hey, I still have my ages from this. We have a pretty good amount of time left on the timer. How does that timer work? I'm very confused. Those numbers don't seem like they're right. Uh, take the ancients here at this uh, on their side of the map. Everybody's still down on their side of the map. I accidentally bought a Bloods of Haste. A good gauntlet of strength there, I'm going to buy a Crystallis. Now, Demon Edge generally is more cost effective than Crystallis if you're buying a crit. However, on a hero like Sven, which is an AoE hero, 
where the idea is to try and do as much damage as possible, I would rather less reliable damage at this point, because I already have my Assault Cuirass and my Mask of Madness, they're pretty reliable damage. I want the Crystalis to give me a percentage chance of getting a crit, does plus 30 damage um, and a 175% crit. If I do 175% crit with my God Strength and I hit everybody on their team, I do a huge amount of damage to everybody on the team. I do something like 600 damage to every single person on their team. I have picked up the recipe because I, I just feel like I absolutely know that I'm going to be able to get the crit. And even when I'm being controlled at this point, I'm not taking a huge amount of damage because they simply can't afford to focus me at this point. I have so much more health and I have a huge amount of armor as well. You can see just how quickly I take that that kill there. Go onto a monster kill streak. This is the point where Sven becomes a good hero. Any idiot from right click creeps, but not everybody can go completely godlike. Even on a pretty fed carry like I am at the moment. This is the important point for a Sven. This is the important point for any carry, obviously, but more so on a Sven because you just do you. You're so aggressive on the hero. It's a very aggressive hero. You have to be attacking to make up for it, to, to make up for the extra damage that you're taking from things like Mask of Bandas, for the fact that you're not actually that tanky. I only have 2,600 health at this point. It's not a huge amount. Considering I'm using Mask of Madness at the same time, I'm taking a pretty damn good beating when I do these fights. Now, I'm going to finish off my, uh, my crit here. Sell the drum at this point. It's outlived its usefulness. Somebody else can buy a drum if we really feel like we need one. We're not going to feel like we need one that much. I don't think I should have got the drum this game. I think it was a mistake. It would have allowed me to get a more mask that much faster. Maybe I should have just got a bracer. Maybe I shouldn't have got the bracer at all. Uh, the magic wand, again, something that I sold quite a while ago. Ended up not being particularly useful. I am going to kill this lion really want to kill this lion anyway. Am I going to kill this lion? Let's see. Either way, my Aegis has ran out, Ollie sent me back to base. So, not going to kill this lion. So, I've picked up a Daedalus now. Daedalus gives me plus 81 damage. So I'm doing uh, 157 plus 105 damage without my ulti. Uh, if I put my ulti on, I'm doing... Let me see. That's 250... Say 260 damage times 3... That is 600 and no 780. Uh, 700 and 700 not damage plus crit. If I do a critical strike for 240 percent, I will one shot their team as long as I get a pretty good damage roll. I will absolutely destroy their team in one, and they said divine ready, uh, because they can see I finished farming, I am absolutely huge at this point, I'm max level, Think, just think to five minutes back, five minutes back I was going, I'm kind of ready at this point, I think I'm ready at this point, I'm now suddenly on 12, 3 and 15, I'm suddenly at the point where Sven is starting to really really shine, and this is going to be a team fight where I'm really really shining. Look how fast I cleave through their team there. You can see one of those I think was a pretty good crit there. And I just completely destroyed everybody on their team. Godlike, beyond godlike with a triple kill. These two people are going to get the same treatment. A 1389 crit then. And another 13. So I'm critting for about 1389. I'm on a rampage now. This is the point at which a Sven absolutely carries your game. And... There's a DD rune top. There's a DD rune, and I have around five and a half k. What to buy next? What do I even buy next? I have no idea what I buy next in this game. I'm saving that DD rune for a second. What do I buy? I really want to know what I buy. I can't remember at all what I buy at this point. So let's find out. Buying up a heart. This is going to make me absolutely unstoppable. I'm going to absolutely destroy everybody. Sadly, I'm not going to use this DD. It's going to run out too quickly. I'm so sad. I genuinely am sad. Like, seeing it, seeing somebody do that much damage to everybody on their team is just, it's just so cool. So, the reason that I was able to do all that damage in those team fights is because I wasn't controlled. And it, honestly, I, I probably harped on too much about it. But BKB is the difference in this game. And... 
consider yourself saved, Gaz. So, GG, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you can see just how mechanically this hero works, the sort of mistakes that I made, and how you can use this hero in your, your own games. It's <laughs> someone on their team said that they uh, can't lose in the old chat, I think. But uh, they said well played. I don't think that was particularly well played by me. The difference was I knew my role exactly and I absolutely played to that role. Sven is a teamfight hero, but he's a, a mid to late game teamfight hero. He needs that level of farm. And like I said, it's farm. It's farm is what made that game for me. I had 210 last hits. The closest anybody else has is actually the Shadow Fiend who has a lot more. But Shadow Fiend only does damage to a single target. That is the difference that Sven makes. You have to get a BKB on him absolutely so that you can run in and do that damage on purpose. Thanks for watching. GG.